welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Michelle. I am a wholesaler with Poshmark, and today's video is going to cover offers. Uh, being a part of the Poshmark community right now, it's just a super exciting time. We have over 50 million Poshmark users, and about 5 million of those are sellers. The evening parties have over a million listings. There's just so much traffic and so much activity in e-commerce right now and in, in Poshmark. So this is a great time to be a part of Poshmark, whether you are a buyer or a seller. But today I'm specifically going to cover um, how to best handle offers from buyers as well as how to strategically uh, handle offers that you're sending to buyers so that you can capitalize on all the potential uh, sales out there and uh, close some deals. Welcome to Poshmark Offers, the inside scoop. Today we're going to go over how to handle lowball offers and I'm going to share with you two Poshmark hacks. These are things that you cannot do with Poshmark, but because of the way their system is set up, I have a backdoor way for you to get more offers out to customers. So let's get started. Number one is how to cancel an offer in Poshmark. If you submitted an offer in Poshmark, you know that it is binding, you cannot change it, and it is valid for 24 hours for a buyer to decide if they want to accept, decline, or counter the offer that you have submitted. However, there may be some situations where you feel that you want to cancel the offer, make a change to it, um, and Poshmark just does not allow you to do that. There's no uh, wiggle room in their functionality to allow you to do that. But what I want to share with you today is my first hack regarding offers and being able to cancel an offer so that you can resend it, modify it, bundle it, do whatever it is that you need to do to make the changes that you want to make that Poshmark typically does not allow you to do. And this came up because I received this question. I sent an offer, but now the buyer has like more items and I want to bundle it for them. How do I cancel an offer? So I'm going to show you um, an example of that with one of my closets. Here I'm trying to send an item to somebody's bundle, but it's not allowing me to because I have an offer for them already. So here's my offer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the listing and I'm going to edit it and down at the bottom, I'm going to change it for from for sale to not for sale. And then I'm going to save it. So now at the bottom, you see it says not for sale. Now I'm going to go back and edit it again. And I'm going to change it back to for sale and save that listing. Now what I can do is I could take the listing and I can share it and it will share this time. And now, my person has both listings. Now I can submit a new offer with both listings instead of just the one listing. And that's your workaround. Lowball offers are a total downer. They bum me out, but I think that I need to change my frown and turn it upside down because every time somebody reaches out to you with an offer, it's a potential sale. So really try to change your mindset and remember that this is somebody who is interested in your item. I would rather somebody be interested in my item and send me a super low ball offer than to shut it down and not even submit an offer at all. Cause you never know. I mean, it may be an item that you are willing to sell for a lot less or it may be a buyer who is willing to, to buy it for a lot more. They're just trying to find where your head's at and if there's any wiggle room and try to get the lowest possible price for the item that they wanna buy. And maybe they're willing to buy it at full price, but you'll never know if you decline the offer. So don't be discouraged, don't be offended, don't get frustrated when somebody sends you an offer for 50% of 
your uh, list price. I see so many people who have messages you know, my offer is firm, don't lowball, I don't wanna see any lowballs. Well, you know what? You're missing out on opportunities because I get lowballs all the time and I don't sell at a lowball price. So it's up to you whether or not you wanna play the game, but you need to have tough skin and be like, okay, that was not cool that you sent me this lowball offer, but I'm gonna work with it and see if we can make this work and find a middle ground so that you're happy, you get the item for a value that you think it's worth, and I sell my item um, at a price that I was willing to sell it for to begin with. So here's how I do it, and here's a couple of examples of some things I've sold just like in the past week, um, all of which you know I got offers for that were substantially lower than um, my list price and a lot lower than I was willing to sell them for, but. Um, I think there was like four of them that I had and uh, three of them turned into sales in a reasonable price range. This one can be a little frustrating when you get an offer for 50% lower than what you've listed it for. So this item I had listed for $15 and I received an offer for $8. And instead of just saying, heck no, there's no way I'm gonna sell it to you for $8, I countered with 12 and really that was the lowest that I was willing to go for this item. And they came back with 10. I realize it's only $2, but I've already given them my absolute lowest, which was 12. So I recountered with the $12. Um, you can't see it here, but I'm, I'm guessing I probably went back in and left them a little note saying, thanks for your counter offer, but this is the lowest that I'm willing to go. Hope the price works for you. And they went ahead and, accept, and accepted it. So I sold this one for 20% off instead of 50% off, which is what their original offer was. So if I had gotten frustrated and I said, well, that's just rude and just declined it altogether, I would have missed out on this sale. My suggestion would be to never decline an offer. If that offer doesn't work for you, I would always counter. Um, by doing this, you open the opportunity for a potential sale. If you decline it at the very beginning, you'll never know what that person was really willing to pay for, for the item. Uh, what I've seen is, as I've shown you, I had somebody who offered me 50% and they ended up um, taking 20% off. And so, and that was something that I was willing to do. I was willing to sell that item for 20% off. There's no way I was willing to sell it for 50% off, but it's a game. It is a game and depending on how much you're willing to play the game, um, you can really be successful because a lot of people out there are getting really angry and upset by and um, feel it's very disrespectful to submit an offer that's super low, but you also have to think that these buyers are people who are wanting a deal. They wanna get something for the best value that they can, and um, it never hurts to ask, it just as it never hurts to counter offer with um, what you're willing to pay. So try it out and let me know, comment below and tell me if it works out for you. The last question that I received was, I've exceeded the max amount of offers to a buyer, but now they're ready for me to make an offer. Is there a way around this? So I have had this happen to me and I have an example of that to share with you today. Um, if you've submitted an offer to somebody more than once and they have not responded, meaning they have not countered, they have not declined it, they have not accepted it, they've done nothing, Poshmark doesn't want you to uh, continue to be active in reaching out to this person because quite frankly it could be annoying if you get an offer every day from somebody for the same item. Um, it would be nice if the potential buyer would just decline it or say I'm not interested or you know unlike the item so you don't think that they're still interested in it but this is a safeguard that Poshmark puts in there for the buyers because they don't want you to uh, be bothering the buyers by constantly asking them if they you know, are interested in this item for a dollar less or two dollars less or whatever it is. So um, they limit you to the amount of times that you can send them an offer, um, but there's a workaround for that. To avoid it to begin with, I would just say to look on and see when the person is um, online. So just to avoid the possibility of them just not seeing that you sent them an offer. So uh, I would make sure that the person is um, 
active this hour. That's what it would say if you go to their about section um, on their closet and then you look at their profile at the very top, it will say um, this, this user it was active two hours ago or this user was active three days ago or this user is active in the past hour. So if it says that they were active in this past hour, then that would be a good time for you to send them the offer. Um, if you're gonna go through this process that I'm gonna walk you through right now, um, you just wanna make sure if you're gonna send another offer to them that you check and see if they're online. Okay, so this one is, this one's super easy. Two-step process. One, you're gonna go into the person's bundle and you're going to delete the listing and then you're gonna go back and you're going to share that same listing back into their bundle and that will allow you to submit another offer. Thanks for watching my video today. If you are new, I would super appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and check out some of our other Poshmark videos here and here. Leave a comment below if there's anything else that you would like to know about regarding Poshmark tips, tricks, hacks, and facts. Have a great day, guys.